welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Who are the fantasy authors that set us afire with scintillating swordplay, edge of your seat duels, and mage fueled battles filled with massive armies, filled with warriors showing courage in the face of certain doom? Well, I'm about to give you my picks, my top 10 fantasy authors for the best action, the authors who knock your socks off. Of course, this is somewhat subjective. Some people will probably disagree with some of my picks and or want them to be higher on the list or not on the list, or some people will have candidates that I don't mention, and that is perfectly fine. These videos are my attempt to create a conversation about what it is that we love in fantasy. I've done videos already on the authors who make us think, the authors who make us cry, the ones who make us laugh, and so on and so on. And I'm trying to add a little bit of nuance here to the top 10 format that we see so often on BookTube. So here I am trying to get a little bit of a microscope out here and see what it is that we love about these authors' works, their storytelling, what it is that grabs us. And so let me begin with a few, oh, honorable mentions here. Uh, I, I just, this was a really tough one, folks. Fantasy is full, full, full of great, great authors with all kinds of great action. Uh, these are my picks. Uh, so I'm going to go with David Gemmel as an honorable mention, uh, vastly influential author. He's an inspiration for many people who write grimdark these days. Uh, he has some great battle sequences in Legend itself. Uh, it is a, a, one of the best sieges you will ever read about, in my opinion. Uh, just great stuff. I've only read Legend, so perhaps if I'd read more David Gemmel, he would be uh, in my top 10. But as it is, very impressed with Legend. Another one that a lot of people are going to want to see a lot higher on this list. Uh, but for me, it's an honorable mention, and that is Robert Jordan, author of The Wheel of Time. Uh, just some really epic stuff goes on in this series. Uh, some great character arcs as well. For me, that is the, the biggest strength, perhaps, of Jordan's work. But obviously, there are some massive battles uh, filled with magic and all kinds of epic uh, conflict in there. So uh, definitely a series to check out if you like sprawling epic fantasy with some really cool action in it. Another one that I love, a different level of action so far, at least I've only read the first six books in the Dresden Files. So Jim Butcher makes my list for the, the hijinks, the slightly more comedic form of action you'll see, at least in these first six books. I especially loved Grave Peril, the opening, uh, where we meet Michael Carpenter. Just a fantastic scene. Probably the most memorable scene for me so far in the series is the opening to Grave Peril. Uh, but I just love the, the, the uh, troubles that Harry gets into and, and how he gets out of them. Really clever stuff. Another one, uh, an author that I keep failing to mention and I feel bad about because it's been 30 years maybe since I've read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams. I should have people pointed out. I should have mentioned him in my top 10 authors for prose. And actually, I think that's a fair point. Uh, I, I do believe that Williams belongs in the conversation when it comes to prose, but there's some great action as well. These are big, long books, uh, but there's some great action scenes in the midst of them uh, with some really memorable moments. And another one that is not quite making my list, but is certainly, I think anyone who's read it would agree, it is action filled, is The Rage of Dragons uh, by Evan Winter. Now, I've only read The Rage of Dragons by this author, and it was, for me, just a, just like in, in fifth gear the whole time. And the whole story was like, and it was just filled with action scenes, uh, lots of training montages as well. But there's hardly a chapter or a page even without some action in here. If you're, if you're a lover of uh, that kind of thing, you will probably enjoy Rage of Dragons a lot. Um, so now, here we go for the list, the top 10. Here they come. These are my top 10. Uh, and I'd, again, love to hear about yours in the comments. I'm going to go with number 10 with Scott Lynch, author of The Gentleman Bastard Sequence, the three books that are out so far in this. I've enjoyed thoroughly. This is Ocean's Eleven style action in here <laughs> for much of the time. Uh, you're uh, with a, well, uh, I don't think it's a spoiler. Uh, it's probably right on the back cover. Yep, there it is. Uh, you're with thieves, essentially, and they get into some hijinks uh, and they have to get out of them. And there are some really 
grim, dark stuff that happens as well. Uh, but you, you have some pretty memorable blood-fueled moments in the uh, Gentle Ambassador sequence. Uh, just some great stuff. Uh, and, and Lynch is really a, a vastly talented author. I do think uh, it's a shame that he hasn't been able to um, produce the, the next book in the series yet, but I'm, I'm hopeful that he will. And I certainly will be first in line to pick it up when he does. And next on my list, an author who I am positive a lot of people are going to yell at me for this, putting him this low on the list. But there it is. This is my list. Uh, and I'm sure uh, I would love to hear about yours. If you would put this author higher, that's great. Uh, and I can say that Brandon Sanderson certainly deserves a place in the conversation. Now, I've only read the first three Stormlight Archive books and the Mistborn trilogy, the original trilogy, as well as the last three books of Wheel of Time, which Sanderson wrote. He finished the series for Robert Jordan. So those nine books I've read by Sanderson, and I can say there's some really great epic stuff in these books. Uh, there are some very memorable action scenes in here, some duels, some battles, some really passionate stuff, some really great stuff. Uh, and I think that Sanderson does, uh, one of the reasons why uh, he's as popular as he is, is he does that really, really well, I have to say. Uh, there, now for me, in, in, the, uh, in the books, there are some long drawn out moments where we're talking about the magic and how it works and all that. And that's less interesting to me. So maybe that's one of the reasons why he's lower on my personal list. But there is no question that those big epic moments, he leads you up to them. And there is a reason why people talk about the Sander Lanch. Um, so yeah, I mean, he can really get your blood going for sure. And I'm sure a lot of people would put him in for their number one. I have no doubt about it. But you can tell me about that in the comments. Uh, and next on my list, uh, we have at number eight, Jenny Wirtz. Now, this is an author that a lot of people think of as being a great uh, in terms of prose and in terms of ideas. And she makes my list uh, absolutely my best authors for prose and for the authors who make me think. But also, there is some really visceral action in The Wars of Light and Shadow, let me tell you. Uh, also in her standalone, To Ride Hell's Chasm, it is harrowing stuff, and it feels so just, it will give you goosebumps. Uh, there, there is just, it's so powerful. There is a battle that takes place early in The Wars of Light and Shadow that I will never, never get out of my mind. It is seared into my memory, uh, and it just feels so real, and it feels so powerful and poignant. Uh, so the action, when it happens in a Jenny Wirtz book will leave you scarred, let me tell you. It is powerful, powerful stuff. And another one on my list at number seven is Ian C. Esselmont, one of the two Malazan authors, and he is the author of the novels of the Malazan Empire as well as the Path to Ascendancy series. I'm holding up Stone Wielder, which is the third book in the novels of the Malazan Empire because it has my favorite naval battle in all of fantasy, nay, in all of literature. It is brilliant stuff. Uh, like his comrade, Stephen Erickson, uh, Ian C. Esselmont can write. He is a very talented writer. There's some great, great, great battles in the novels of the Malazan Empire, uh, some really epic stuff. And like Erickson, he tends to work toward a convergence of epic proportions just some amazing stuff with these guys pull. Uh, they must have had some tremendous ideas while they were gaming this world together, the Malazan world, um, and you can see it in these books. Uh, highly recommend, if you are a reader of uh, the Malazan Book of the Fallen and you haven't yet tried Esselmont stuff, well, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, achievement that these two authors have, uh, have made together. Next on my list is uh, uh, the author of a trilogy I recently finished, and that is uh, the amazing Fonda Lee. And uh, I just finished last year, was it? Uh, the end of the year, I finished the Green Bone Saga, which begins with Jade City. Some of the best duels I've seen, some heart-pounding moments in here, a uh, really cool magic system that feeds into the action as well. Uh, if you're a fan of uh, gangster-type narratives, but also of uh, martial arts and that sort of thing, really cool stuff in here. Um, just, it, it, there's no, there aren't a, a, the large-scale battles that you, you see in some of the other 
uh, books that, I, that I've mentioned so far and will be mentioning, but the duels in here and the small scale battles are really pretty pretty damn cool, actually. Um, so Fonda Lee really gets you. She gets, keeps you on the edge of your seat during these magic-fueled uh, duels between these uh, rival gangs who belong to these families in, in, the, uh, in the series. Just really cool stuff. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out, I mean, it, for me, this is a really good page turner. And speaking of page turners, next on my list at number five is the incredible Mark Lawrence, author of the Broken Empire trilogy, among other great trilogies. I actually think maybe the action in the Book of the Ancestor might be some of my favorite stuff, the stuff with Nona. Uh, but there's also some just explosive action in the Broken Empire trilogy as well. Uh, and some, uh, you know, all the trilogies, really. And Lawrence is one of those writers who can surprise me. Uh, like, the, the action just comes suddenly, and it is it just knocks you uh, off your feet, and you get up in your, you know, kind of dazed and not knowing what just happened. Uh, and he, he catches you by surprise that way. Um, but I just love... Love these books by him. Uh, every single one has always been a page turner for me. And next we have at number four. It's getting pretty serious here, folks. This is, <laughs> this is a very hard list for me to make. Uh, but I think most people would agree that this author deserves a place. And that is George R. R. Martin, author of A Song of Ice and Fire, among other things. Uh, just uh, I'm holding up probably... Uh, what would be a lot of people's favorite fantasy book ever, which is uh, A Storm of Swords, book three in A Song of Ice and Fire. I mean, he catches you by surprise sometimes. If you, you're reading this uh, series for the first time, there are going to be moments when your heart falls on the floor and it feels like somebody stomped all over it because you didn't see this coming. And there are some massive battles in here. Some of the stuff you do see coming and it still shocks you. Uh, just a uh, tremendous author. Uh, the, uh, the fact of the matter is he took a lot of inspiration from real world history from the 15th century, the Wars of the Roses, the Hundred Years' War. Uh, I mean, he just, he knew his history and uh, this has the feel of just uh, visceral real world violence in it. Uh, that uh, there's there's betrayal, uh, there's just m mud caked, blood soaked battles. Uh, there's <laughs> you name it. I mean, just this is a series that man. You want action? A Song of Ice and Fire is it for you? And what could possibly top that then? Well, for me, Stephen Erickson at number three, author of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I mentioned already how he and Ian Esselmont bring their books to this incredible climax. The uh, convergence is what you call them in the Malazan uh, context, but oh my goodness. I mean, a, a fan of the Malazan Book of the Fallen can list off some of the famous battles that take place. Uh, you just say Igatan, and every Malazan reader will have flashbacks. Uh, you say Coral, and again, they will see a different battle. Uh, Erickson, I mean, I mean, there are blood tornadoes, okay? Blood tornadoes in, <laughs> I mean, they're in some of these battles. I mean, they're just, oh my goodness. Plus, Erickson actually uh, is a trained fencer. And so there's some real authenticity in the sword play as well. Some of this sword play, some of the, uh, the those scenes happen, bam, really fast because that's how it really works often. Uh, you don't have the uh, people twirling around, showing their backs and stuff like that. It's described in a way that you know this guy knows what he's talking about when he writes a, an action sequence. And it is breathtaking, and it is visceral, and it is just tremendously well done. I mean, he's, it's no, I've made no secret in these other videos that he's my favorite author of all time. But who could possibly top my favorite author of all time in terms of the action? Well... At number two, there's Joe Abercrombie. Yes, the author of the First Law series. I mean, this just started out for me, just hooked me from page one with the, just in the middle of a, an action scene, essentially. And what I love about Abercrombie's action is that it is never glorified. You get to see 
human beings at their most awkward and ridiculous and in the midst of the battle people are screaming and it stinks with uh, viscera and vomit and you name it it's just it's in the it's in the mud back to the mud folks that's where Joe Abercrombie takes you <laughs> in his action and yeah it's just so so oh man it is so so dirty and and just very uh yeah it is it is grim dark you know at its finest really uh so yeah I, I love that i actually love that about and the other thing that abercrombie does trademark abercrombie is in the middle of a battle scene you do all this head hopping you you move around from one person to another and it's it's just you got to catch your breath with every every single transition to another character and it's just brilliant the way he does that at times he does it like no one else i have to say uh just great stuff in here uh and also some of the best duels ever written uh, are in his series, going in that circle. Somebody's not coming out, right? Uh, and that's how it works. So yeah, just uh, amazing stuff. So uh, who is my number one? Well, my number one author when it comes to action in fantasy is none other than the incredible John Gwynn. He is a, an author after my own heart. Uh, this is a guy who is the author of The Faithful and the Fallen and the sequel series of Blood and Bone and also of this beautiful uh, trilogy, which is two books out at the moment, The Blood Sworn Trilogy. Uh, I mean, look at the cover. Look at the cover. I mean, it is just so cool. It tells you what to expect in there. I mean, it, it, John Gwynn, is, he just goes for it when it comes to the battle scenes. He gives you the... Uh, bird's eye view and he gives you the right in the thick of it and he gives it all to you and it is just so i mean when i read his battles i think well he actually knows what he's talking about there's strategy involved but there's also just chaos in the midst of everything like you plan the battle out and yeah it sort of kind of goes the way you plan but then all this stuff happens and it's messy and it's chaotic and he just captures that feel of being in the midst of it. And, and sometimes in, in, in all of it, he kind of lifts your heart in an amazing way. And, uh, and he's also an author who appeared in, in one of my other videos, Authors Who Make You Cry. And you could be bawling your eyes out in the middle of all this stuff too. Uh, so just a tremendous, I mean, John Gwynn, he also does reenactments. Uh, so he really knows his stuff when he's talking about weapons and, and chain mail and all this stuff. Uh, he, he really does know what he's talking about. Uh, so uh, when, when the battle happens, the way it happens, you can trust that there's a level of authenticity to it uh, when John Gwynn is the, the, uh, the pen behind the, the battle. So yeah, I mean, just great, great stuff. Uh, I highly encourage you to check out John Gwynn's books if you're a fan of action and fantasy. And it gets huge and epic in the Bloodsworn trilogy for me, especially. We're talking about not just action among human beings, but among the gods. I mean, the gods participate on, on a, just a tremendous scale. Uh, and I just jaw-dropping, knock-your-socks-off, epic scale. Uh, so tremendous stuff. So those, those are my picks for when I want some action in my fantasy once again, I'd love to hear from you guys about what uh, your favorite fantasy authors are when it comes to action. I'm sure there's some great candidates out there that I left out. I have no doubt about it. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments. And that is it for me for now. Until next time.